Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm Bishop Van D. Coulter. This is Pastor Barb Coulter. My beautiful, and, and if you saw the last Love and Happiness, you see I done went and got a new chick because she's not the same woman. Got the different tone of hair, which I'm loving, uh, and prayerfully you all like it too. Um, we're about to start our next uh, installment of Love and Happiness, and we're going to be answering questions today that were emailed uh, to our uh, questions at loveandhappiness.tv. So um, we've gotten a tremendous amount of positive energy and response. So we know that what God is doing through this uh, ministry, love and happiness is a blessing mm -hmm. uh, to a lot of folk. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want you to spread the word real quick, share the page. Let's just start it because some of these questions are, are real relationship talk. Mm -hmm. um, again, uh, just until everybody gets real comfortable with our format, it's real talk. So sex is going to come up. Mm -hmm. Not just marital sex, because Christians are having sex. Yeah. I know that's a shock to all the Pharisees and all the religious people and, and all the ones who are holier than everybody else or those who have forgotten because now they're married and they no longer have to creep. But Christians are having sex. Mm -hmm. And sex is one of the big issues uh, in the body of Christ because it is the the hidden thing that makes everybody uh, feel like they're less than saved, mm -hmm. uh, as if all sins are not the same in God's sight. So we're going to have a lot of sex talk. Um, maybe not all today, but just that's part of love and happiness because uh, a lot of people express their, their love in sex and intimacy. So uh, we're going to be talking about a lot. Again, if you have questions, please, please, please send them. We'll We'll uh, look forward to answering them. Mm -hmm. um, we will give you biblical answers to real life situations, mm -hmm. um, but there'll also be real talk mm -hmm. because the letter does kill and the spirit does give life. So we're gonna give real stuff. Um, we appreciate all of the input and the votes. And if you look at all the comments, uh, almost 200 comments from the last uh, installment, the first one last week, mm -hmm. about voting for love, voting for happiness, you could see that me and my humility, I absolutely won the argument of winning a happiness uh, that if you had to choose one, love or happiness, uh, it became close as my wife went and got all her family to vote. And um, half of them did not vote for me, they voted for happiness. So. Yeah, they are truth tellers, amen. Truth tellers, <laughs> amen. Um, so the love and the happiness, we appreciate all the love that y'all are sending right now um, because we're getting ready to go in. We're getting ready to go in. We've already prayed. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, all hearts and minds are already clear. Amen. So we can, <laughs> we, we can get ready to get into it. Um, so first, what, we're, what we want to do is make sure that you know a few things. Um, this is all getting ready to migrate over to Love and Happiness um, page. So we have a page on Facebook called Love and Happiness. Please, 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 if you haven't already, like that page or follow that page. And that will allow you because next week and every week thereafter, and I'll say this again at the end, um, we're going straight from the Love and Happiness page. Everything is happening from there. Uh, after uh, Later today, this video and last week's video will also be on YouTube because you can't believe how many people we've found that are not on, YouTube, uh, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They are just... Oh, no, I don't have a Facebook account. And I don't know how it's possible that people cannot have a Facebook account <laughs> I don't need in one. today's I don't, age. I don't need one. I don't know. want one. It's all but, right. No, she doesn't. I'm busy. She uses mine like everything else, my credit cards, my debit cards. So it's all. It's, Do y'all see this? What's his is mine and what's mine. That wasn't even God. You already felt the spirit change. Okay, real quick. I'm sorry. Um, we have a lot of questions to answer, but I'm still a little stuck because love did not get a fair shot. I'm just saying, because if I can just stop the tape and rewind you really it. Can't. We I really can't. We really do need I know to move to the next episode. Just, it, no. I just, I'm just focused it's on. It's not fair. We have. We have just a little bit because over all this 18 year journey, I remember you saying that when we we're going through the wilderness and financial stuff. Ladies, if you're, if you're feeling me. Um, there's a little saying when there's no finance, there's no romance. And all I kept hearing you saying is, Barbara, we got to stay in love. He didn't say in happiness. When, he said <laughs> we got to stay in love. Listen, so we had listen, to. Listen, let me say this. When, yeah. when, I, when I reference love, yeah. 
I, it's happiness in love. But you said I'm not, you got I'm not, I'm not, love. okay, well, here's what I wasn't doing. Now, doing hold on, hold on, hold on, no, we talking, look at me, we talking, we're talking, we're talking, wait, 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 I said it so if I authored the statement, yeah. I am the one who's the authority on explaining it. I'm so just here's saying. here's what I was saying. Yeah. What I was not saying is love like we gotta be agape, that we yeah. gotta love each other and just be the spirit of God. I was literally speaking about being love in the happiness sense, because if our happiness died, then our, our marriage would fail. Right. So so the so while I was using the word love, uh -huh. I was referencing keeping the happiness in the marriage happiness is the air in the room and it's based love on is the happiness. love is the room love right. is the frame right but happiness is the oxygen in the room right so if there's no if you can have the frame absent oxygen right so i didn't want our marriage or relationship to suffocate okay. so that's what i was trying to say to her but i used the term love but what i was saying is yes love but i'm saying happiness i'm saying we have to find things so so in our book love and happiness again shameless plug God bless you to those of you who have purchased. Um, it's a it's an inexpensive read, but it's a lot of tremendous wisdom. Mm -hmm. One of the chapters is uh, called "Don't Die in the Dark," mm -hmm. and that's what my wife is kind of referencing because mm -hmm. um, in this particular part of our journey early on, mm -hmm. um, what I didn't when we started hitting the <laughs> felt like medieval kind of you know challenges of of just economics mm -hmm. and everything was just just really really hard, you know because. You remember the mortgage bubble that burst, you know, we built a home and we, we built a home and got in yeah, like and when we got in the home, it was like mortgage shock. 14, and, 15, 16 years yeah, ago. That was, yeah, years ago. It was, yeah, but it was like mortgage shock, you know, and some of you may know what that feels like where financially everything just all of a sudden just pow and mm -hmm. you're just like, oh my gosh. And then your focus is on making sure that you live through this season with paying all the bills and everything you have to do. Um, because, you know, at the time, you know, I was, uh, her business had literally closed down mm -hmm. her. Literally. It was, it was the, right up. I, when we hooked up, I was seeing, I had a vision. I'm like, I got my business. She had her business. I'm thinking we come off the honeymoon. We're going to be doing big things. Mm -hmm. And we went all in, had an amazing honeymoon. Mm -hmm. We went to. All over. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. It was like a world tour. Just you know, 21 it, it was days. Just, you know, Hawaii, Hawaii everything. everything just, just world tour. Came back, her business totally shut down. And when it shut down, we were in the process of building our, our home. Mm -hmm. And they told us, you cannot be late on anything for the next so like uh, 14 mortgages. months. Yeah, so I, I had to carry on my end because her income completely stopped. No, had, three mortgages, uh, three two, card notes. I had, I, yeah, whatever. I had two, we don't want to two, make right? it. Anyway. Long short, yeah. it became a, a major journey that, that in there, it was stuff I didn't sign on. You ever been in a relationship and go through stuff you didn't sign on for? You wasn't expecting to deal with? You thought it was going to look different? And when it began to look different, that's when the wisdom began to, to focus on, we got to make sure we don't die in the dark. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that our relationship, you know, because I told her eventually we're going to come out mm -hmm. because we know all things work together. But the question is, will we still want to be together? Right. You know, we'll come out, but will I still like her? Will she still like me? Mm -hmm. Or during those dark times, do I start snapping, saying things you can't recover from? Mm -hmm. Does she start snapping, saying things that we can't recover from? Right. Because words give life to stuff. Yeah. So as a result, I, I, took a, I took a very aggressive approach to, to keep anchoring our relationship to say, hey, we got to be happy when this is over. Right. We, have to be, we have to make sure that when this is over, we still like each other. Mm -hmm. So there was a concerted effort to focus on, yes, we got all these bills. We have all this debt. We have all of this stress. But we have to do whatever we could, and money was not available. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we had to come up with with cheap dates. I, you know, I, ten dollar dates. Yep, coupons. That was the thing. At least once a creative. week. Creative. One. For, she had to find a creative way to spend ten dollars on a date. Mm -hmm. Then I had to find, and this, you know, this before gas was like ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Your date would be just the drive now. You know, you you, you couldn't drive four miles. You know, back then this gas was like a dollar. Fifteen dollar mm -hmm. twenty five. You 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 know you book three dollars of that. Sit, you know you driving all day. It wasn't like that. So so what what we did was we found some fun things to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know different little restaurants would have little you know buy one uh, lunch get the other one free. Make special. a big sub. Go to the park. Yep. Have a blanket. Eat lunch. Have a romantic. Yep. Uh, you know. 
uh, lunch in the park, go yep. to the beach and sit and just hang out, go play tennis, just mm -hmm. do things in a park, yeah. having fun. Just and, and, out. and we had rules during that time that when we were spending it together, we could not talk about our issues. Or kids. We couldn't we talk about over, none of the... Then, but, yeah, we, we yeah. couldn't talk about none of the issues, mm -hmm. couldn't talk about none of the, mm -hmm. none of the things that created conflict, mm -hmm. you know, like where we were still trying to understand and become one. Mm -hmm. The Bible says to become one, but the becoming part is what nobody talks about. They just stand you at the altar, you know, now to become one. But it's a process, and we don't always agree in those early seasons like you learn to agree. So that's what this ministry is really about. It's about helping you get the tools to learn how to build a happy relationship. Mm -hmm. So whether you're in one or whether you plan to be in one, mm -hmm. it's going to create some, some really good stuff. Mm -hmm. But I really, really, really want to get to some okay. of the questions because they were really, really cool. Now, now the, the first question that we're going to, to answer and we definitely want your thoughts on this as well mm -hmm. as, as we discuss it because I'm going to try to catch, um, catch you, you know, in this. Okay, so the first woman, and, I, and again, we're not giving names, but her question was, I have both love and joy in my marriage. However, I often feel there is and should be more. Is this normal? So this particular person is saying, I have love, I have joy. And but at the same time, she she feels like something's missing. OK, and she's saying, is it normal? Should should it should she be should you be in a relationship that you are you love the person and you're happy about the relationship, but you feel like it's missing some things. It feels like it's just not giving her. And um, when when I read this and I certainly want to hear your thoughts about this. But when I read this, Pastor Barbara, my thing was. It, it gave me the impression that she has some desires that are unfulfilled mm -hmm. and you can't fulfill those through another person, no. you know? So, so unless she articulates those unspoken expectations, mm -hmm. if she does not say to her spouse, because we don't know, you don't know, I don't know, mm -hmm. based on the question, whether or not she's saying the lack of fulfillment is in the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe she loves him. She's happy that they have a home, but maybe all he does is come through, come home at five o'clock, watch TV, go to bed, get up, do the same thing. Maybe she's missing excitement. You know, what do you think this woman is really saying she's missing? Um, because she's, she's saying, is it normal? It's only normal if you create it as your norm. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you create it as your norm, then it's going to be your normal. So you have to decide, do you want a, a life that looks like whatever it is that's missing? And if you don't, then it's up to you to create that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's up to you to decide. I don't want a life that looks like all I do is live to pay bills. Mm -hmm. I want a life that looks like I indulge myself mm -hmm. and find pleasure in other things. We don't know if she, she needs friends. Right. We don't know if she needs, you know, outlets, you know, like tennis and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't know. But what we do know is there's something that she's desiring and it's causing her to have a, a bit of a void. Right. So to you, uh, to the question, the person who asked the question, I would say to you to look within yourself and identify what it is you feel the, the void is. That's to good. find that first. That's good. Because we don't know whether it's in a thing or a person, if it's the relationship, if, you, you, if, if he's not romantic enough or if he's super romantic and you just have personal aspirations. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, mm -hmm. but I would say to you to, to identify that first and then make it part of your normal life. You know, don't don't be afraid to to break the monotony, if that makes sense. What do y'all think? Do y'all think that 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 would make sense? If you do, just just hit me up with a thumbs up or something. Um, but I definitely want to know if uh, if you all have something to contribute. Um, yep, we love and miss you, too, uh, Apostle. Um, so in, in that particular regard, we're pretty good. OK, so that's one. So Pastor Barbara, read another question. Okay. We don't get into the cool <laughs> sex talk in a minute. Because I know folks tune in for the sex talk. <laughs> they waiting for the video to turn into that kind of video. But go ahead. Well, the second question, Bishop, is obviously a woman. Mm -hmm. um, and she says, Bishop, what do you do when your spouse is selfish and can't love you right? Because it's all about him. Girl, what do you, you do? need to leave him. <laughs> um, I don't know what that, um, again... If your spouse is selfish, mm -hmm. the question is really first to you, mm -hmm. have you enabled him? Because 
I'd like to think he was selfish when you met him. Mm. So if he was selfish when you met him and you indulged him, mm -hmm. you kind of helped make that spoiled brat yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. If he was selfish, because you teach people how to treat you. Yes. You, you, you absolutely, matter of fact, you could tweet that. You teach people how to treat That's you. That's true. Because <laughs> if, if, you, if you are um, indulging him and he says, and can't love you right because it's all about him. It's all about him. When I start hearing extreme words like all, saying all about him, not sometimes, but or well, not too many times, but all about him, which implies you really feel, you know, the, the child in you feels like I never get anything I want. So that that emotional state um, has you right now so twisted up mm -hmm. that no matter what he does, you're going to see it as, see, you're so selfish. You never. And once it starts going down the path of you never mm -hmm. and you always, then there's no room for any balance. So I would encourage you first, uh, I can't say caller, I'll say questioner. <laughs> I would encourage you first to recognize perhaps you have been enabling some of this. Mm -hmm. And if you're with them, and I assume you're not crazy and two kinds of crazy, that means he's probably not terrible as a person. So if he's so not you chose terrible, him. you chose right. him. You told him. You so it has to be something. I like to, you know what I, I like to do? Mm -hmm. I'm always telling, I, put the pros and cons down the paper. And you have mm -hmm. to put down the pros and cons. And if the cons outweigh the pros, then you need to to evaluate why are you with him and then just make a decision. Yeah, because all relationships are going to require work. Because if he can't, if you're saying there's no there's no room for him to love you because it's all about him, mm -hmm. then you have to evaluate, well, why am I with him at this point if, if there's no hope? Yeah. If you're saying, it, you know, and and and, and And I'll be honest with you, from my experience counseling, it doesn't sound like um, you're coming from a place where you want to walk out on them. Mm -mm. It sounds like you're frustrated that there's not enough balance mm -hmm. in how you're intimately connected. That mm -hmm. a, you don't get to feel like your voice is being heard. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm hearing. Okay, And if that's the case, then, then now you have to now take a step back, look in the mirror and say, some of this is what I've created. Right. I've enabled this to occur. Mm -hmm. You're an adult. You get to be heard. Mm -hmm. You don't have to scream to be heard. You can just stop the car and say, listen, it's time for me to be heard. Mm -hmm. Now, if they refuse to hear you and if they refuse to give you your respect that's due to you, that's when, as Pastor Barbara is saying, those cons start to outweigh the pros. Because now, you, you know, who wants to be in love with someone that is not really in your, in your corner, making your opinion matter, making your position count. And while you may not always agree, at least they ought to make you feel like what you're saying is relevant. You know, so so to you, we just say first look in the mirror, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in an authentic way, because folks say, you know, they, they always want to point the finger. But a lot of times they're um, participating on a lot of levels. And then if they're not loving you right, um, then you have to teach them how to love you. You have to then begin to communicate. Right. This is what's right for me. Mm -hmm. This is not what's right for me. Right. And that's hard for a lot of people to do because you don't want to sound petty or small. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Just okay. tell them what, what matters. Tell them, hey, I need, I need to be heard. Or I need, can I finish my sentence mm -hmm. for a change? Or can I tell them what they need and let them learn to evolve? Mm -hmm. Because we all evolve in a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first met my wife, I wasn't in, into holding hands every 30 seconds. She was, so she taught me without telling me. She never had, let's sit down. Listen, when we're walking, I want my hand held. And I want, when we're driving, I want my hand held. All she did was she kept reaching, holding my hand when I'm driving, <laughs> when I'm here, when I'm there, when I'm everywhere. So now when we're driving, I reached to her hand. It's, and she done trained me. She done taught me, you know, like, like I'm a zoo animal. She done, I'm, I'm, she a kept woman, I'm a kept man. She done trained me. But you get to, tr you, you really do teach people how to treat you yeah. because that's what she wanted. So she taught me that hold my hand without ever saying hold my hand. But again, the person has to have a heart that wants to make you happy as well. So when I get in the car now, I'm trying to text her, like, give me your hand. I'm like, well, I'm texting something. I'm doing something. It's like, well, I want to hold your hand now. I'm like, okay, give me a minute. It's, like, it's true. I'm reaching for a hand like all the time now. It's like, but 20 years ago, I can sit in the car and <laughs> this hand be just doing this. So we teach people. All right. So um, here's another one. Um, man, um, we said we're going to cover the five, these five today. 
and I want to make sure we're respecting time. All right, so this one says, are soul ties biblical? All right, soul ties. Soul ties. Kids in the room, under the sound of our voice, this is where you, you need to say, okay, little, little, you know, Bobby, Amy, Shabazz, Google, whoever, you got to leave for a second because it's about to start talking sexual. Um, probably the last one you're going to get. All right, so are soul ties um, biblical? Now, this is somebody I have to believe is asking, again, when you give us just a piece of it, you need to understand my mentality. I'm, I, I believe half a truth is still a lie. So if I give you a piece of an answer, trust and believe, I'm going to have like eight contingencies for that because I really don't know what you're really asking. Okay. <laughs> and you're not in front of me to really ask that. So more details is good. And then your question or I'm going to give you a bunch of scenarios of possibilities because I don't know what you're really asking. So it sounds to me like this is somebody who's single. I doubt a married person is wondering if soul ties are biblical. This also, if it is, is somebody who is married and they done connected with so many people, they feel like they, they sleeping with all of them at the same time that they're sleeping with their, 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 their wife or husband. If it's a single person, as we're going to assume it is, they're asking, hey, I feel connected to <laughs> Romeo. Because Romeo rocked my world. Okay? Romeo did some stuff. <laughs> he, he put his hard hat on. And Romeo worked. But you married then, somebody else. No, we're assuming they still sing. Oh. Okay. We're, we're, we're in, in this hypothesis. Oh, okay. They're a single person who is trying to resolve still feeling connected to someone they're not married to. They're not married not to you. anybody. Okay. Yeah, they, but, you know, but if you've been with multiple partners, mm -hmm. and I know none of you Christians have, wink, then the reality is that you have tied spiritually yourself mm -hmm. to others, mm -hmm. okay, on some level, okay? Now, you can try to say it's not real, but soul ties are real. Mm -hmm. I mean, on a soulical level, you connect it and, and you get an imprint. So what happens is if you were uh, very, very promiscuous, you close your eyes when you're kissing and you can't remember who you see. You would just be closing your eyes like, okay, who am I kissing again? Okay, 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 okay. That's because you done had so many exposures that everything is blurred. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were somebody who was only with one person, hey, you, 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 no matter who you kiss, you just see that one person. You know, it's like you only have one person. So, so there is a truth spiritually and on a soulical level that we connect to. So the key is your soul is supposed to come under the authority of your spirit once you're saved. Mm -hmm. Okay? So on a soulical level, yes, there are ties. No different than there were when you were uh, doing things on a carnal level. Uh, and it really, your soul loved it. Your soul loved going to the clubs. Your soul loved, you know, maybe getting high. Your soul loved... You know, on, that was on a soulical level. You know, when you was desiring and lusting that on a soulical level, you love that. And then you get saved and greater is he that's in you. And so you start to all of a sudden bring it under submission. And you start to be able to say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm now in Christ, a new creature. I'm, I'm letting the old stuff go. I'm not going to be looking for Romeo no more. Now, now I'm looking for Boaz. You know, now I'm looking for somebody that's going to be able to, to meet all my needs. You know, not... Romeo met one need, but then when you get a Boaz, he's going to cover you and meet all your needs. You know, you, you're not going to be sitting there feeling like you're struggling. Yes. Yes. It's going to be that video in one minute. It's not hard uh, to break a soul tie if you submit it under the spirit of God. Okay. When your chest still gets warm because you're looking at somebody else in lust, mm -hmm. then you got to realize that lust will eventually consume your spirit mm -hmm. and that person will always be able to ring your phone and make you respond. Mm -hmm. And what you really want to do is take a step back and, and allow yourself to come under the authority of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because that spirit will break every yoke from the past, everything from the past. Mm -hmm. Every one of us had something in our past that our soul was tied to. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, you don't have to just be tied to sex. You could be tied to the wrong crowd. You could have a soul tie to, to a crew of gossipers, a, a crew of, you can have a soul tied that's tied. Your soul could be tied. And again, your soul is where your intellect is really at work. Mm -hmm. And so you have reasoned out. 
you know, that you're still going to go to go to the club mm -hmm. after four people got shot there. Mm -hmm. You know, you reason that out to say it's OK. I'm, you know, I'm not going to get shot. You reason out. I'm going to have sex unprotected, even though four other people got it and contracted a disease. Mm -hmm. You reason out. I can have multiple partners because I'm just I'm just single. I'm just living my life. You rationalize this behavior out. And as a result, on a solical level, it has a tie. It has an authority. You're on a string to it. Mm -hmm. So your behavior then, then follows what your mm -hmm. intellect has reasoned. So what I'm saying to you, bring it under the spirit because the spirit doesn't have the, that intellect. Mm -hmm. You have to put the mind of Christ in you. Mm -hmm. And when the mind of Christ goes into you, your behavior patterns change. Mm -hmm. So even if you're married and you have some ties to some stuff, mm -hmm. that's just an area God is telling you, you haven't yielded underneath my spirit mm -hmm. to give my spirit place in that area. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of God will fix all of that stuff up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really wanted to just talk sex stuff, but these are kind of biblical questions. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to. Uh, assume that they don't require, you know, the right attention. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we we'll have more fun and clowning and stuff later. But um, let's see, is this one me? Okay, this one's this one's me. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is it biblical? Again, with you know, and it's cool. People it's are cool. asking these questions. That's right. So we have to ask. Right. We have to right. answer them. Now, is it biblical that two people shouldn't live together before marriage? Okay. You know, I have seen some 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 broadcasts uh, last year where folk were actually trying to um, debunk um, whether it's okay to live together before marriage because they were saying the word shack is not in the Bible, and they was like basically trying to say like old school preachers always talk about like shacking. You can't be shacking, and their their response to that was shacking is not in the Bible. We're not talking about shacking, okay? The question of, is it biblical that two people shouldn't live together before marriage? Again, I have to be clear. The assumption is you're talking about having sex with the person you're living with. If you're friends and roommates and it's friends with benefits, then you're talking sex stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. We're not talking to roommates who just, she happens to be a woman, I happen to be a man, we're, we're rooming, she has her own place, nothing sexual is going on. Not talking about that. Y'all resolve that within yourselves, mm -hmm. okay? But in terms of two Christians who are living together, cohabitating, and, and sexually active, the question is, is it biblical that they should not live together? Is there, is there a specific rule in the Bible that says, thou shalt not share the same apartment or house and be Bad. saved? <laughs> yeah. So, so here's your answer. It's not in what the Bible says about whether you live together in the same place. Because real talk, and some of y'all married folk know this, you could be living together, married, and still not having sex. Single people seem to think, unless y'all like us, that you're getting all the sex you can have, right? And there's a lot of married people don't get to have a lot of sex. And they thought they was getting married to have all the sex they wanted. Then they get married, and it's like, man, we, we do it like once every month. So to y'all, my prayers are with you. May the Holy Ghost keep you. <laughs> I ain't even chasing that. But when you have individuals who actually are living together to, uh, to, to uh, live like their husband and wife, the, the, the issue biblically is not your Christian ethics concern about whether we should or should not be living together. Because okay? if we're going to stop there, then we're, we're cheating ourselves from a Christian ethic perspective, because Christians who are dating will take a vacation to Hawaii or Cancun or somewhere together. Yeah. So if the fact you have the same address is where you stop, then you may not be covering yourself Christ from a Christian ethic perspective properly, mm -hmm. because you might say, well, we don't live in the same apartment, but we take trips together and we stay in the same hotel room. So here is where we really fall with this. If God himself deals with fornication and he calls it sex outside of the covenant of marriage, yes. if he spends his time communicating and he's telling his time and he's saying to everybody involved, listen, I want you to make sure that you keep yourself pure. OK, I ain't judging you. I trust me. I'm not judging you. Real, real talk. I didn't even see the inside of a church for the first time till I was 24 years old. I didn't get saved that day. I grew up in the projects in, in Brooklyn. 
I didn't see the inside of a church. There was no churches coming into my projects in Brooklyn, trust. So there was plenty of history in my life that I had to then resolve after I got saved, maybe into the, you know, like 80, 88 when I got saved. And I didn't resolve that right away. So I know exactly the, 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 the war within when it comes to sexual immorality. You know, where you just like, you know, God, you, you just said you want to save me from heaven. I got I to gotta tear up my phone book. You know, we got to talk about this. Let, give me a little time. Let me get, you know, let me get myself together. So I am no, I, I'm not throwing no stones at you. What I'm explaining to you is at least do it knowing what God says about it. And if you can still resolve doing it real long, then you have to therefore question your relationship with the Lord instead of trying to find a loophole to allow you to live together. Well, the Bible doesn't say I can't live together, so it must be okay. No, it's really a matter of abstaining from the appearance of evil if you're dating. You don't want to cause a bad testimony mm -hmm. by y'all living together. Right. But it's usually you're not concerned about what people think. Especially if you was like me, I really didn't care what people thought about me. If, if I was on the subway in New York and I'm kissing the tongue kissing on the subway crowded and I turn around and look and you look and I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> what are you looking at, <laughs> son? <laughs> so all I'm saying is what happens is when you're in that mindset, you really don't care about what other people think. So now you have to ask yourself, do I care about what God thinks? <laughs> now you have to say to yourself, am I interested in knowing what God thinks about my behavior? Mm -hmm. And he tells us what he thinks about it in his word. Right. So, so in, in uh, 2 Corinthians, Paul, Paul is having a conversation about sexual immorality to mm -hmm. the church in Corinth because he's trying to say to, the church in Corinth was basically like Las Vegas. <laughs> they was considered sin city. They were the sin city. And Paul is there and he's trying to have all this conversation to tell them, hey, check yourself. Look at look at your walk with the Lord and what your your sexual lust and, and behavior is and know that God's not pleased with that because you were bought with a price. Mm -hmm. So so the long short is no, it doesn't specifically say thou shalt not live together or shack as some people seem to want to be hung up. But it also gives you clear behavior of how you should conduct yourself sexually. And until you are under the covenant of marriage, and, and, and that's a whole nother discussion we can have because a lot of people are married, but they don't have a Christian union. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they did the world's version of marriage, which, which means divorce and everything else can follow very quickly versus creating a marriage on God's institution, which is holy matrimony. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole nother conversation for another day about marriage. But that's, that's my take on it. Mm -hmm. Um, is yeah. there anything you want to add to the living together thing? Um, I'm going to park right there. Do you okay. Have, yeah. Do you have time for one more question? Or? I do. We barely got time for the one more. Like and one just out of... Examination. Yeah, because that's easy. That's, that's easy to that's me. That's the last I, one. I'm going to let you tell me your thoughts about that. The question is, is artificial insemination a sin... If you're not married. If you're not married. So is it, is, is it you know, you can't have a baby normally without sex. So the concept is, well, if I'm pregnant... Is it a sin? Okay, so you go. Is it a sin? People want to hear the bishop. <laughs> <laughs> no. They want to hear the bishop on that one. Just, just, all right, real quick. Everybody watching, just say yes, no. Is it a sin? Is artificial insemination a sin if you aren't married? Real quick, yes, no. Everybody take a stand. Can't nobody creep into your phone and do nothing to you. <laughs> just real quick, yes, no. Come on, shoot, y'all, shoot. Yes, no. Okay, I got a yes. Come on, yes is come on, yes is stand up, no stand up. Don't worry, we'll talk about can't, it. We can't be no yeah, straddle we'll get shot. <laughs> come on, yes, no. Is artificial insemination a sin? Yes, no. Okay, got got a no, got got yes, got another yes. So I got so far more yeses than no's. Come on, Gene, okay, I got you. Okay, got another no. Come on, is artificial insemination a sin? Come on, vote. Take a stand. Yes, it's a sin. No, no, it's not. All right. All right. It's enough of y'all that said it that if we was to all have a fist fight, it'd be a fair fight. It's about 50-50. All right. That's so, like 50-50. Yeah. yeah, it's like 50-50. All right. So here's, here's, here's my biblical position. Okay. Again, you got you to gotta always consider the source. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm very, very, very comfortable in, in everything I've done in, in terms of Bible, in terms of even matriculating up to my PhD in theology. I'm comfortable in also at the same time saying, I don't know everything, mm -hmm. okay? But what I will, what I know, I know, and what I don't, I don't. Mm -hmm.
But here's what here's what I do know in terms of whether or not artificial insemination is a sin. The way that you are artificially inseminated is that there is a needle that is inserted or, you know, they insert into your cervix area, you know, what needs to happen. Okay, so let me ask you a question. If they were taking that needle to inject you with a hormone, let's say you wasn't being injected with a sperm, mm -hmm. and they were injecting you with just a, a, you know, a hormone, maybe, you know, you need more vitamin D and they're going to, whatever. They're giving you something in that same right. process. Uh -huh. Is that process a sin? Becomes my first question to those of you who look at artificial insemination as a sin. No. Is, is the process the sin? No. You know, it, it, is it a sin for them to take that needle, inject it into that cervix area if they were just injecting, you know, no. you know, testosterone? Because for some reason you needed some testosterone no. to be more, less feminine. No. I don't know. That process is not a sin. No. We can all agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So since the process, therefore, is not a sin, mm -hmm. then what God calls a sin becomes the action of lust from the flesh, okay? So it is sexual intercourse that God says, hold up now, if I just let everybody in the world have as much sex with as many people and do your own thing, always eternally, only a few of y'all jokers ever gonna get married. And the, the reason he's like, no, I need to make sure that y'all look at marriage with honor and esteem is because Ephesians says that marriage looks like that Christ and us look like marriage between Christ and the church looks like us husband to wife. Mm -hmm. So he, he wants us to understand that the institution of marriage, once we, we get saved, once we get married, we submit to an institution. So now I, I'm a husband. She's a wife. I can't do certain things because I'm a husband. She's a wife. Mm -hmm. There are things she could have did single. I could have did single. I'm not at liberty to do. Mm -hmm. I have to submit to her. She has to submit to me. But we're technically submitting to the institution mm -hmm. because the minute somebody gets divorced, then they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Okay, the institution has corrupted, has shattered. It's over. Mm -hmm. The institution or relationship concerning salvation, likewise. There are certain things. All things are lawful. Everything's not expedient. I'm a Christian. But because I submit myself under the institution of Jesus Christ as my Savior, that whole paradigm of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the role they play in my life, I submit to that. So I change my behavior and my focus and my life reflects what I believe. Right. Marriage becomes the focus of when God says, hey, y'all can't be running around just having sex all kind of willy nilly, because if you do, you're going to forget the purpose of marriage. I don't share the mindset that sex is just to make babies. I know some of y'all with nine kids think that you're supposed to have sex to make babies. No, I don't agree that sex is just to make babies. Sex is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold myself in check and not say how awesome it is. But to those of you who know how awesome it is, it's a wonderful thing. It's, it's a moment that I feel God's love in that moment. And I think God intends that that connection to happen in a context that he ordained. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's only redirecting and the church has done a wonderful job of making people who have sex feel like lepers. Mm -hmm. Like you're a leper. Get your act together. You got pregnant. Sit in front of the church and mm -hmm. tell everybody how terrible you are. The church has done an amazing job at highlighting a sin right. in, at the expense of so many other sins. Right. They ought to bring up the gossipers and sit them in the chair, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> you know, since so, so you don't get caught in too many lies, sit in front of the church and let that liar be seen like a leper. You know, because too many people are still believing sister so-and-so when she's talking. So, but, but the sex thing becomes, to me, an, an issue not because of the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. The baby is not the sin, mm -hmm. okay? That baby does not represent the sin. The baby is life. Just like God is love, he's also life. Mm -hmm. So you cannot tell the creator of life that he made a mistake. Mm -hmm. He's the creator. So the artificial insemination, the person who decides to do such an act is basically saying, maybe I'm not trusting my destiny mm -hmm. to be in covenant of marriage, mm -hmm. but I have love to give and I want it to come from my womb. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go adopt Chucky. I want to, not to call every kid, <laughs> it was often Chucky, I'm not saying it. What I'm saying is, they, they're saying, I want to, to have from my own flesh, mm -hmm. and, and I want to 
to control my season of parenting. I don't want my eggs or my age to tell me no. And they make a personal decision. Now, now again, this is just this is just my theology. I do not have a Bible that says thou shalt not artificially give life. And what I believe, what God doesn't tell us not to do, he's leaving up to you. Mm -hmm. He tells us what he doesn't want us to do. Right. He tells you. He doesn't stutter. He doesn't stammer. He doesn't. But he doesn't say, thou shalt not be on, you know, text when you drive. You, you understand? But, but he gives you the choice to do it. But he also says, use some wisdom. You know, pay attention. If you're not paying attention to the road, you could really hurt somebody. Why are you texting? You know what I mean? And you don't have to hear from God to decide whether you should stop texting. You can just look around the road and say, I'm being irresponsible. Mm -hmm. So what I what I say is, yes, you can um, artificially inseminate as a personal choice. OK, and that is not a sexual act. Therefore, I cannot classify it as a sin. That's me. Now, if you're going to call it a sin, I need to know what sin you're calling it. Is it a sin of unbelief because <laughs> they don't believe they're going to get a man? What sin for those of you who are calling it sin, those of you who call it sin, no judging to you now. If I helped you see a broader pers perspective, praise the Lord. But if you still like, man, that bishop is bugging. That's a sin. <laughs> Please tell me, just shoot up real quick. What specific sin? I, I'll tell you, I don't know everything. I can only tell you what I believe with all the Bible that I know at this at this stage of my life. So if you have it as a sin, what is the sin? Tell me what the sin is again. Shoot that up real quick. All y'all who said no, don't go hiding now, laying in the cut. <laughs> don't no, don't they, be scared. If they said no, they're on the right track. No, no, no not the no. Yes I mean the ones who said say yes. Thank you. Yeah. I stand corrected. Those who said yes, <laughs> please feel free, you know, to just share your share if, if you got a reason. And if, and if and if I've helped you get a broader perspective, awesome. But if you still like, no, it's a sin. Because I've learned something about religion. Mm -hmm. Religion has a way of making you feel like Something is no matter what the Bible says, mm -hmm. you know, so so the Bible can tell you what is not a sin. But because pastor said mm -hmm. or because mama and them said for or so you long, already you always heard heard it from whoever all your life, all your life. Then you begin to but feel you never research the scriptures yourself yep. to find out if it was true or not. You just So even in light of the truth, you go, ah, I see what the Bible says, but or I'm stuck to my Pentecostal, I tell my husband, you know, I'm non-denominational now, but I always say, well, my Pentecostal beliefs said <laughs> whatever. Yep. And, and, you know, for me, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Right. And, and I just was graced not to be under the band says. of, of that, that religious yoke. So my perspective is a biblical one. It's not based on a perspective that is uh, religious. Um, I see someone saying, I open their eyes, praise the Lord, the wisdom, because that's what it's all about, um, is us being more interested in truth than religion. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so again, when we are confronted with an opportunity to evolve a biblical position as Christians, it's just better. It doesn't mean the person who calls it a sin and the person who doesn't is going to go to hell or one's getting to heaven faster. It just means on, on this process of growing in grace, let's just all kind of dwell according to his knowledge. And so we, we just, so that's what I'm saying. If you got something, feel free. Please don't think I'm just telling you. Uh, I am just sharing at my level of understanding of scripture, the spiritual side of what it gives life to. And what if God has not told us what not to do, I really believe that he's saying it's up to you. But just because it's lawful, it may not be expedient. Just because you can, don't. Just because you could, don't mean you should. should. <laughs> okay. So, um, so with that, um, I just want you to take your questions, please. Mm -hmm. um, I think what we'll start doing, because mm -hmm. I kind of just learned something today. I learned that if we answer all, um, like more than two questions, it will take the whole show. It will take the whole show. We answered like five. Yeah. Plus so I had my little moment where I had to like try to, you know, support my nah, position okay. on love because, you know, <laughs> happiness won. See, in the hood, we used to call that roaching. She's roaching. Stop roaching. I'm so, listen, all I'm saying is send us the questions. We're going to kind of take the top two, I'd say. Okay. Or but three. we're going to answer. Well, yeah, if it's real short, simple, we'll take two or three. But there's, there's other things we want to talk about about the relationship stuff. 
that I realized I, I just it was like a, a learning experience for for me. Well, what we'll do is send the mm -hmm. questions in, and we'll put them in the bag, and we'll just peel one out, and whoever we pick out will answer. Right, right. That's but, fair. But, but, but what I'm saying is, yeah. while we do that, we're not gonna waste the 30 minutes doing you know like game show stuff. Okay. Yeah, we do it. We'll pick them. But what I'm saying is, we're only gonna cover like two or so because there's really a lot of cool stuff mm -hmm. about learning you, mm -hmm. learning how to prepare you mm -hmm. to be a better version of yourself right. for relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, some actual actionable things that you get to, to look in the mirror, ask yourself, mm -hmm. assess about yourself, mm -hmm. things about your relationship that you can take and you can, you can work on to make your relationship mm -hmm. turn into what it is. And, and God has graced us with uh, so much to share mm -hmm. in those things that will, you know, make, you know, put hot sauce on, on, your, on your marriage, mm -hmm. you know, where it, it just, you can relight the fire. Mm -hmm. Um, you can start a fire if there hasn't been one, you know, whatever it is. Um, but more importantly, um, learn how to be single and saved and happy um, and not not kind of um, build a foundation when you have a fresh start. Um, because there's all different stages. Some people have a relationship, but it's on um, not good foundation. Right. Um, and there's a lot of dysfunction in there. Mm -hmm. And we talk about stuff to help you make dysfunction begin to function properly. Mm -hmm. um, so so all the different aspects of relationship, um, the fun thing is we get to do this and we can take our time and we can unwrap uh, so many things we get to unpack and then bless you with and then the videos are here mm -hmm. and then you can use them to just talk about it and say, hey, what do you think, honey? And what do you think? Mm -hmm. As we begin to talk about a lot of the, the precepts to strengthen love and happiness, you know, so that you're not happy without love and you're not love in love with or loving without happiness. So please, please take a second and make sure you follow our love and happiness page. Yes. Do that today because yes. this is the last one we're doing on my Facebook side. Okay. It's going to all happen on love and happiness side. We're going to also be putting relationship tips and suggestions and ideas mm -hmm. and we're going to be asking you to give us your tips mm -hmm. and suggestions mm -hmm. and ideas mm -hmm. because we don't have all the answers we know some of you may have some really cool things you've discovered mm -hmm. that has worked wonders in a relationship and so i want to create a community of love and happiness that's what we want to do yes. that we're going to need you to give us your great moments where you said wow this was a phenomenal turning mm -hmm. point in the relationship mm -hmm and or someone told me about mm -hmm. and we want to make it a community so love and happiness that page in a few short weeks is going to turn into something way more than just a page mm -hmm. it's going to be a place where we all get to gather mm -hmm. when we have our first love and happiness retreat for relationships mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be in the florida area so we'll set it in the winter time so those of you who are not living here come in florida you'll be able to come and see you know you know just the beautiful weather get a break and you know so we'll be setting a love and happiness retreat mm -hmm. um and it'll be all of that information all of that kind of stuff that it's just going to be really cool so make sure you follow it make sure you share it mm -hmm. again we're going to post all the facebook videos onto youtube mm -hmm. uh the last one last week and this one this week will be there today mm -hmm. and you can share that because some people are really not on facebook right. i don't know how it's possible that they can actually be that I way need to but be on facebook what? There are some people who are not on Facebook, but they can access YouTube. So um, please make sure you also send us some cool he questions. He calls me Uber. I don't have time. I'm constantly going to gymnastics and track teams and ballet, and I don't have time. He calls me Uber. I'm, 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 I ain't chasing that. So questions, email us at questions with an S, questions at loveandhappiness.tv. Not dot com, not dot org, not dot net, dot biz, dot gov. No, it's lovingheappiness.tv. All right. And we're looking forward to turning this, this into something that everybody who loves love can participate and have fun. We're going to we're going to use you your that? participation. Did you hear that? What? Everyone who loves love. Love. Yes. You said that. Mm -hmm. It's for everybody who loves love. Love. Yeah. You said that. Not happiness. You said Again. Everybody who loves love. Again. Why didn't you say everybody who loves happiness? You, you know said when everybody God. Everybody who loves love. See, she gonna, she gonna. I'm gonna say, say this and I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm gonna say this and I, this should be say la. This said, should be, this should be say la. Here it is. So what I'm saying when, is, when God says love in the Bible, do you not know that depending on which verse you're reading, it means something different. Everybody knows that. Let the church say amen. Everybody knows. Amen. That. So just because All the word, when, is, when, when I say love. Mm -hmm. 
everybody who loves love, the whole picture of love is incomplete without happiness. Without happiness. You just said. Without, with happiness. When I say love, just like there could be a dab, agape, it could be phileo, yeah, it could be all this. I'm saying love. I'm saying this. I'm just, I just thought people should have just said love last week and we got more happiness. She's still roaching. Love. She's saying. still roaching. Right. Stop Amen. roaching. Amen, no, church. You got your votes for love last week. It it's wasn't over. enough. It's That's on all. to. Not my fault. Not my fault. So love we love y'all. Love you. And we look forward to your questions. And feel free to go nuts with it. Okay? Is it all right to have a threesome? What do I do? Does he is oral sex okay? Is y'all can go all in. Go it's all right. And don't put your name. It's okay. No, you can't. It's gonna have your name. We're not gonna tell We're nobody. We're not gonna tell name. nobody. Or like you said, make a fake account or something. You, if you ain't gotta make a fake account. It's all right. It's right. confidential. If we can't hold that, then we shouldn't hold the ministry. Amen. That's all right. We're not telling. Amen. We're not, and we're not judging. Nope. Just trying to figure it out. That's it. Amen. Right. Especially in marriage. No. Because there's certain things in sex in marriage where we're real, 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 like devout Christians. Mm -hmm. they, the missionary position is the extent of it. And we ought to have, there ought to be some freedom in the bedroom. All right? There ought to be, you know, so go, go crazy. Y'all see that sharing the layer behind us? Yeah, swing from it. Amen. Yeah, it's yours. <laughs> the world is your oyster. Mm -hmm. um, but, but no, but, um, but again, it's what, what works because sometimes you have a partner who's very sexual. Mm -hmm. Another one who's not, mm -hmm. what do you do? How do you navigate that? Mm -hmm. You know, she wants this. She was used to this. I'm not. Da -da -da. Mm -hmm. So again, this isn't for kids. This is real talk, real relationship talk. Um, and part of relationship <laughs> is sex. Wow, what'd you do? What? My sister's uh, okay. <laughs> What's up, Irv? I see you, man. We're going to give you all quick shout outs. Freedom. Tell my wife that. I got you, brother. <laughs> Share the videos as they come. Shoot us them real questions. Um, we loving this. We're loving taking the time to talk to y'all. Um, we, we certainly bless you, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we look forward, uh, to real, real relationship talk as you develop love and happiness. God bless you on behalf of me and this beautiful woman. I get to call my, my wife. Amen. Amen.